Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring my art channel. Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Reference Wednesdays, a series of videos in which I show you guys my process of doing anatomy studies. And I am Cosmic Spectrum, in case you're new here, I'm an independent artist slash freelance illustrator and this is my art channel. So, all right, typically I use reference photo packs from Studio Graffiti and for this one, I am using the acrobatic set, which is absolutely incredible. I almost always get excited when I get a new email notification from Studio Graffiti uh, about them releasing a new reference pack, but this one in particular was just so perfect and I was basically obsessed with it from the get-go. Um, couldn't wait to get some time to do some studies from this one and I finally did last week. So here I'm going to show you guys some of the footage. Um, and yeah, these poses are absolutely amazing. Uh, this pack also actually includes poses with two characters or two ladies and that will be absolutely perfect for some drawings that I'm planning to do in the future for my characters Sweet and Zero. But yeah, so I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. I know poses with two people are challenging. And so I decided to just start out with the single poses and just kind of get a bunch of those done first before I tackle the more difficult ones. So I'm just gonna do that probably in a different video. We'll see how it goes. But for now, just single character poses. And yeah, I think what makes these poses in particular extra challenging is probably the fact that they are so unnatural, at least some of them are. And it is a bit tough to make sure that they don't look uh, quote unquote broken, if you know what I mean. So yeah, the context of the hoop does help a lot on that front. Like I was looking over the footage here and um, can you imagine how hilarious it would look if one of these super folded poses were like in a different context, like a person just on a couch, like that'll hold her over? Yeah, it would look ridiculous though. Context does <laughs> bring a lot to a drawing. So I have a Patreon page, like some of you guys know, and um, I asked, I recently asked my patrons if they have any specific parts of figure studies that they are having trouble with in particular and so i decided to just talk about that a little bit in this video uh, the first topic is proportions so i thought this was especially good for this video in particular since some of the poses are so twisted and make it quite hard to judge the proportions especially when drawing. So yeah, um, just a quick disclaimer that I did speed up the footage about five times so I can keep the video at a reasonable length and show you the full process of each pose. And there are a total of six poses in this video. Before I continue, I'm just going to take a minute to talk about my lovely sponsor, Squarespace. If you want to make your art into a career and don't have an online portfolio site yet, you should definitely check out Squarespace. I think it's the perfect place to start because Squarespace is super well-rounded and suitable as a platform for online creators. When I was just starting out, I used some other simple portfolio hosting websites, but eventually had to move on from them all because they offered no other features, which was a huge waste of time in my opinion. Squarespace, on the other hand, pretty much has everything you will ever need in one place, which is amazing. It's got a fluid building engine where you can customize and change all the components of your website. But more importantly, you can set up your online shop without leaving the platform, which is huge. And they even have members areas where you can create an exclusive content space uh, for your potential subscribers. I've been using Squarespace as a hub for all my art needs for a while now, a couple of years, and honestly, I could not be happier. If you'd like to check it out and experiment with building a website for your art brand, you can head to squarespace.com and get started for free. And once your website is all set up and good to go, you can head to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. You can also find the link in my description below. And now back to the video. 
So proportions. This is a bit of a tough one because as you can probably tell, I don't get things right from the very start myself and I don't even always get things right by the end of the pose either. Um, I, to me, generally speaking, like as long as it looks believable, I just tend to move on. Um, I also think that every artist does have tendencies uh, that they personally lean towards. For instance, in my particular case, it's typically the size of the head. I just, for whatever reason, tend to draw big heads most of the time. Like, in fact, that is probably my biggest uh, error, but it's not the worst thing in the world because it's very easy to see when it does happen and it's very easy to adjust. So yeah, the interesting thing about proportions is that uh, I don't even think there really is a correct size or height um, headcount to stick to uh, when it comes to drawing characters from your imagination uh, because things can vary so vastly depending on your style or your level of um, exaggeration and yes I think you can usually tell just tell by looking when something looks off or doesn't make sense for whatever reason um, which is probably not a super helpful thing to say but I have other points to make so let's just move on for now so one of my patrons asked a question about handling body proportions that aren't the standard seven head method or the Loomis method, which I think is eight heads for an adult, I believe, but correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, uh, continued. The question is essentially how I handle non-standard proportions without making them look off or disproportionate. I thought this was kind of a really interesting question because I have never really thought about this at all before. And I've never actually even utilized the proportions head measuring method, like where you have to measure the heads um, against the height of the character. Uh, to me, it actually seems like measuring proportions in heads is a really weird and unnecessary way to do it. That is just my personal opinion. I don't know how much of a hot day that, that is, to be honest, um, but hear me out. So since I've never actually used the head measuring method myself i have no idea how many heads uh the standard body i draw actually includes in height but i tend to adjust the size of the head at least once during the process of a drawing um typically i actually do this several times so i'm gonna assume it varies somewhat especially considering the height of uh, the height differences between the different characters that i draw um i as a general rule, just eyeball everything in my process and don't rely on any like super concrete measurements. But I do have some things in mind that I do utilize now and then that I'm gonna tell you about. So I was talking about eyeballing and I usually guess proportions based on the average lengths of limbs in relation to the torso. Um, uh, because there is actually so much variation between different people that it's pretty easy to see when things are super off, I think, and adjust accordingly. Um, and one of my go-to measurements is the length of the upper arm, um, which typically reaches to the end of the rib cage. Like, I think that's a really good measurement to just keep in mind um, that could help you a lot while you're drawing a figure because it's relatively easy to see. Of course, this is... Um, you know, it, it does require a bit of adjustment now and then, like especially depending on where the shoulder is because the shoulder, like the position of the shoulder is quite mobile on the torso, so you gotta take that into account. But generally speaking, if a character is just simply standing, it is very straightforward to estimate the length of the upper arm, like where it ends, um, and the rest of the arm slash hand uh, tends to go, like end somewhere below the crotch, like it has to come below the end of the torso um probably not that much but approximately this is just like generally speaking how i tend to look at it and um it definitely has to line up to below the crotch not in line um otherwise the arm will look much too short and typically arms can't go much further past about like halfway the upper thigh of the upper thigh maybe a little bit is fine but if you push that too much um the proportions will start to look a little odd but i will also mention here that sometimes um this can be done on purpose as a stylistic choice 
And the most, um, I think the most uh, clear example of that that I can think of off the top of my head for character design is the gorilla's characters, especially the like earlier depictions of them. They have very short torsos and very long arms just to accent the um, those like wacky proportions. And it really makes sense visually when it comes to those character designs because um, they're all kind of similar in that way and it just reads as a pattern and it just works on many other levels stylistically of course so um, the point is uh, depending on your style you can definitely push these things but as a general measurement for average proportions it's good to just keep like little things like that in mind that are very easy to spot once um, when you're drawing figures and once you get into a rhythm of guesstimating proportions all the time, it does get much, much easier with practice and it does start to come naturally. Um, it becomes easier to spot where things look off and depending on the level of exaggeration, uh, you can definitely play around with average proportions, like I said, and push them quite a bit uh, while still maintaining a sense of believability. These days, I don't find myself struggling too much when it comes to body proportions. Um, I can usually get those down some, somewhat correctly pretty quickly uh, when I do studies like this, especially with the references, very straightforward um, and in a generic sort of way, of course. But um, yeah, when drawing characters from imagination, it's actually pretty straightforward as well because um, I mean, I, I guess a lot of you guys know, but as far as body types go, I don't draw like a huge variety of body types. There's a little bit of a variety, but it's not, um, I don't draw super exaggerated characters. And for that reason, the basic proportions don't stray too far off uh, radically, like from the types of studies that I tend to do. So it translates pretty well, like these types of studies translate very well to my advantage uh, when I have to transfer this new knowledge that I gain while doing these into my regular character sketching from imagination. So once I get uh, the generic sort of sketch down with my character, I start to just adjust proportions um, by placing the character in context next to other characters. And that's Typically what makes it much easier to figure out where things are looking off um, as far as the character in particular is concerned. So let me just explain real quick how I tend to adjust proportions without having to redraw much of anything at all. Um, I think this is kind of useful to know. Maybe it's something you already know and utilize all the time, but um, yeah, let me just go ahead and tell you about it. So the head, of course, is super straightforward. It's the first thing that I adjust after I get the basic sketch down. As you can see, I did it a bunch of times throughout this process here. And sometimes I even like um, adjust the size of the head at the end when I look over the pose and I just notice that the head is a little bigger than it's supposed to be. And of course, that happens almost with every pose because like I mentioned, I do have a tendency to make the head too big. But yeah, so the smaller and shorter the character is, typically the bigger their head will look in relation to their body, especially if it's a girl with very narrow shoulders. Like if you go out on the street and you really look at people, uh, have you noticed that when looking around um, at girls that are shorter, um, that are also very thin, sometimes they look like they have very large heads. Uh, especially if their hair is big and voluminous. Um, this actually easily applies to a lot of the characters that I draw, which is probably why I lean towards drawing large heads on people. That's just what I'm used to because I think it looks very endearing and a lot of my characters are girls. So it just kind of goes in that direction naturally, I guess. Um, and most of these studies, uh, I will also say is the same girl, but one of them is not, um, as you can see, she's the, the one with the shorter hair. Um, in the middle of the canvas and in that one the head is actually a bit smaller than the rest if you've noticed um, And I can't be like a hundred percent sure because I haven't really looked at all the photos to compare them But I even just based on that. I, I'm pretty sure that this model is uh, taller than the one 
um, that the rest of the poses are the uh, then the main model that I'm drawing here, uh, and that is why her head proportionally is smaller than the other drawings. And also, um, I made the main model's head a bit bigger in my drawings than in the photos, which was a conscious and just a personal choice for me as. Um, I don't like to fall too deep into trying to keep the studies like super accurate to the photos uh, for one and basically like I mentioned I do have a ton of characters who are on the shorter slender side with small shoulders and have like a larger head so I just guess prefer that and which is why you can see some of that reflected in these studies so her head the way that I draw it is typically bigger than in the photo. The easier parts to adjust, or the easiest actually parts to adjust when it comes to body proportions are typically legs. So the space between the rib cage and the pelvis, and of course arms, have to be adjusted accordingly if you want to adjust the height of the character. Um, this, of course, is only in relation. What? The easiest parts to adjust when it comes to the body are typically legs uh, and the space between the rib cage and the pelvis. And of course, the arms also have to be adjusted if you change up the previous things I mentioned. Um, and of course, this is only in relation to height and not much else because adjusting the body type as a whole is a bit different. But for now, let's just stick to height. So yeah, in order to make a character taller or shorter, I usually just select a leg or both of the characters' legs if they are standing in a simple way. Um, up to about halfway down the height of the thigh, um, like the upper leg, and I just nudge the selection either up or down a few pixels so it'll either like overlap sl slightly or create a gap. Um, and then I just do the same to the lower leg to make it a little bit longer in proportion to how, um, like, in proportion to the change I made in the upper leg, I guess I'll have to follow up and do the same to the lower leg. And then afterwards you can do the same to the arms as well. And this is a very quick way to make a character shorter or taller. Sometimes I'll just a torso length as well. Um, I usually don't even bother filling in these gaps afterwards if it's just an under sketch of a character that I will be cleaning up in the next step of the process. And I will say that maybe something like this seems super obvious to you guys. Um, but you know, I myself actually didn't start using this method of adjusting the proportions um, until fairly recently, I will say maybe like a couple of years ago. It's probably because of course this um, method can only really be applied to digital media where you can make selections and you know, like make things bigger or smaller or just like move things around. Um, of course, you cannot do this on paper. And I did spend the majority of my formative art years drawing on paper on uh, my sketchbooks. And so, of course, my first instinct when something doesn't look right is to just erase it and to draw it over again and over and over again, um, no matter how much, no matter how many times it takes to get it right. Uh, but these days, I do value my time and of course I'm willing to utilize any time saving tricks that I have up my sleeve and I think that this one is relatively tame as far as like cutting too many corners goes. I don't think it's cutting corners much at all and it still really does teach you well enough how to eyeball proportions because I mean at the end of the day you're still relying on your ability to judge what you are looking at in order to make these adjustments and of course a lot of the time I like I mentioned before I do adjust characters proportions um I guess in relation to their other counterpart characters or any other characters that I have already drawn. Usually with the first one is pretty straightforward, but the first one I draw, like if I do a lineup for instance, some of the lineups you guys may have seen me upload in my previous character design related videos, I will start with one character and that is a pretty easy process where I eyeball and I just like, I don't know, I just make a judgment based on the proportions that I go with um, that this is how big the character is and how tall they're gonna look 
And then when I draw the rest of the characters, I just measure them all against the first character that I drew. So if I want to make them taller, I'll just keep like, I'll keep comparing them back to the first character and then to each other. And once in a while, I will maybe even adjust the first character I drew. But generally speaking, the first one will be like just the the one that the rest are going to be compared with um, as far as height goes. So yeah, uh, hopefully that explanation was helpful. But yes, this about wraps up the things that I wanted to talk about in this video. I chose to talk about proportions in particular because it is something that, you know, I actually had a lot more to say about it than I thought I would, which is why I didn't answer some of the other questions, but I will be answering those most likely in my exclusive patreon videos so if you are interested at all in supporting my content my channel my comic whatever um you can check it out in you can check out my patreon page uh, in the link down below and i forgot to mention earlier in the video that again these um these amazing reference packs come from studio graffiti and i do have a large discount for you guys if you do want to purchase any of them you can use the discount on multiple packs all at once or just on one and it is 20 percent off it's um, the code is cosmic spectrum 20 and you can find it in my description so thank you so much for watching my video and watching my reference wednesday series hopefully you like it there's a bunch more episodes prior to this one if you want to um, check out the playlist and yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye